To me, one of the most intriguing rookie running backs in the NFL is Audric Estime. After going extremely under the radar in high school, Estime eventually got offers from every school in the country and proved that he could be a force at the next level. But after being buried on the depth chart at Notre Dame, he exploded and had one of the best seasons and careers for any fighting Irish running back ever, and then as he went out to the NFL, he was once again doubted. Except, I don't think that will be for long. I think Audric Estime has the potential to be one of the best rookie running backs in this year's class, can make a huge impact right away for the Broncos, and has a chance to do something special in his career. Everyone knows this year's running backs class is a little bit weak, but Estime has a chance to be one of the top guys. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to who Estime is. We're going to go through his meteoric rise coming out of high school, how he did at Notre Dame and why it was so special, and what he brings to the table for the Denver Broncos. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Audric Estime. In order to understand how Estime got to this point, we first need to go back in time. He grew up in Nyack, New York, I hope I said that right, and Estime started playing football when he was just four years old. He was the youngest player on the team, and he was forced to play on the offensive line before his obvious talent convinced the coaches to put him back at running back. At the time, his mother was obviously his biggest fan, and she was a single mother and a registered nurse. Her death in 2013 from sickle cell disease was absolutely awful to the family. Both him and his older brother Kadar were both torn to pieces by this, but she provided both inspiration and motivation for them ever since. Estime has one tattoo, which has the Roman numerals of his mother's birthday on his left arm, and he takes a knee and speaks to his mom before every game, a tradition that he's kept her spirit and memory close to his pursuits, a tradition that keeps him close to her spirit and her memory as he pursues his life on the gridiron. He said, quote, Man, I know she's looking down on me smiling, and all the hard work I put in, she laid the foundation. I know my mom is watching over me, and I think about her every day, and I will treat on-the-field workouts like a game day. So for sure I'll be in the end zone, say a prayer, and then talk to my mom, and I want to make her proud. Luckily, he had some other family to help him navigate life in football, as his aunt and his uncle became legal guardians following his mother's death. In the household, he grew up around sports and plenty of successful athletes to look up to, including an older brother and a cousin, who actually would go on to play in the NFL, after his name was Terrence Fede, and he became the first player from Marist College to ever be drafted. His new guardian remembers right after his mother passed away that Estime would join Marist College for their pro day workout and that Estime was running around trying to train. She said, quote, He's been preparing for this ever since he was playing Pop Warner. He's a bowling ball shot out of the cannon, and I'm telling you, he'll be ready. When he eventually arrived in high school, he was an afterthought at first, but would eventually blossom. He went to St. Joseph Regional High School, and one time the bus was returning to school after they had just scrimmaged the team in Union City, New Jersey. That's when a call came through. This was the then defensive coordinator at St. Joe's, as he recalled the unexpected scouting report of one of their own. This was some freshman who was running crazy in his first taste of high school ball. He said, quote, one of our freshman coaches was on the phone just laughing, and he's like, hey, I think you left your starting running back back home. As a sophomore, Estime would continue to get better, running for nearly 1,200 yards with 15 touchdowns, and also being a threat out of the backfield. From there, he would continue to dominate, and started to get plenty of FBS attention. As a junior, he would build upon it as he ran for 1,800 yards with 22 touchdowns and also being a threat in the receiving game. Eventually, he would decide to make his college decision as he would commit to play for Michigan State. That ended up happening over Arizona State and Rutgers, and he also held offers from Texas A&M, Oklahoma State, and West Virginia. But as a senior, things would slowly start to change. He had his best season as he once again ran for 1,800 yards, this time with 22 touchdowns on the ground. This happened in just eight games due to a shortened campaign, and he was actually unstoppable. St. Joseph head coach said, quote, I think some people had questions about speed and some other things, but he's been unstoppable. For the most part, he was an undervalued recruit, and he was considered a near-consensus three-star recruit until late in the process. That didn't matter, though, as he won New Jersey's Player of the Year award, and one play encompassed it all. The play was meaningless, but the effort was extraordinary. With his team on the brink of a loss to St. Peter's Prep, he plowed through two defensive linemen, carried two more defenders on his back, and another dove for his ankles, but he kept barreling forward for a 27-yard gain. It took seven defenders to bring him down, and most of them looked like ants as Estime rumbled ahead for what he considered the best run of his season. He had a rare combination of size, speed, and elusiveness, and eventually he became a four-star recruit. He also became one of the nation's most coveted running backs, and while he was committed to Michigan State, he said Notre Dame had been showing increased interest in him after his sensational senior year. 
Yes, he would eventually decommit from Michigan State and sign with Notre Dame after that year, and he had plenty of youth left. He was young for his class, having just turned 17, and his coach said, quote, he still has a lot of growth left in him. In terms of the Irish, he knew it was a possibility, and he would hope it would become a reality, but it didn't make his flip to Notre Dame that easy. Why the Irish? He said, quote, I just thought Notre Dame was the best choice for me. It feels like home and can make me successful, and it'll kind of be the best of both worlds. It's one of the best academic schools and one of the best football schools, and you can't really go wrong with that. I think they'll help me be successful in life and reach the goals I want to reach. In his career, he ended up rushing for 3,924 yards with 50 touchdowns in just 30 games. According to 24-7 Sports, Notre Dame was getting a stud as he was listed as a four-star recruit, the number 13 running back, and the 231st best player in the class of 2021. So, how would Estime end up doing in South Bend? Well, let's take a look. When Estime would arrive at Notre Dame, he was immediately compared to former Irish Tony Jones Jr. The comparison made a lot of sense, and it was an example of how effectively Estime could fit into the Notre Dame offense. He was thick and physical enough to be an every down back, showcasing the ability to hammer teams between the tackles and to make plays on stretch plays, and to handle his business as both a pass catcher and in pass protection. It was a slow start to the career of Estime in South Bend though, as he came in with former star Kyron Williams, entrenched as the main starter for the Irish offense. In his first year, he played a decent amount on special teams, but did not get many opportunities as a running back. He ended that first campaign with seven carries for 60 yards, and the majority of that came in one contest against Georgia Tech. That was all the way back in 2021, and in total he finished with seven carries for 60 yards. Going into 2022 though, Estime would start to become a bigger deal. He was part of a two-headed running back room that included Logan Diggs, and despite sharing touches, he was pretty much fantastic in 2022 now that Kyron Williams was off to the NFL. In his first game, he ran for a touchdown against Ohio State, and then two weeks later, had a huge touchdown and a win over Cal. His first big breakout performance would come against North Carolina, as against the Tar Heels, he ran the ball 17 times for 134 yards and two touchdowns, and then had nearly 100 yards and a win over number 16 BYU. The first five games were great, and from there, he finished the season really strong. He had a touchdown against Stanford, a touchdown against UNLV, two touchdowns and a win over number 16 Syracuse, and then he went over the 100-yard mark and a touchdown and a huge win over number 4 Clemson. Notre Dame was now off to a good start after a slow start to the season, and he finished the year helping them beat Navy, had two touchdowns against Boston College, and then was kind of a non-factor in a loss on the road to USC. He'd end up playing in the Gator Bowl against number 19 South Carolina, and in that game he had nearly 100 yards. In total, in 2022, he finished with 920 yards, with 11 total touchdowns and one more score out of the air. Estime was now a breakout player, and with one more good year, he could be off to the NFL. Except going into 2023, Logan Diggs would opt to transfer to LSU, so now it's going to be Audric Estime, and then both Jeremiah Love and Jabron Payne behind him. This was going to be his first opportunity to be the workhorse back, and he ended up really delivering on it. His first game would be huge, as he had nearly 100 yards and a touchdown in Ireland against Navy, and then followed it up with three straight performances of over 100 yards. One came against Tennessee State, one came on the road against NC State, and one was against Central Michigan, in which he had 176 total yards. Week 5 was the game that everybody was waiting on, as number 6 Ohio State would come to town. Sadly, Estime and the Fighting Irish would end up losing 17-14, but he did run against the Ohio State defense for 70 yards. After that, Estime would bounce back, as they would beat number 17 Duke 21-14, and two of those touchdowns came from Audric. After that, he was held pretty much to nothing against number 25 Louisville, before a monster end to his 2023 campaign. In his final five games, Estime ended up having 11 touchdowns. Two of them came in a win over number 10 USC, three of them came against Pittsburgh, he had won against Clemson, and then he had won against Wake Forest. He ended up saving his best for last, as in his final collegiate game against Stanford, he ran the ball for 238 yards and four touchdowns. Estime put himself in elite territory and had one of the best single games in Irish history. In total, Estime ran the ball 210 times for 1,341 yards and 18 total touchdowns. He was a bona fide star, and his 6.4 yards per carry was insane, and he had the fifth highest single season total in program history. He also set the program record for rushing touchdowns in a year with 18, as he passed guys who played in both the 70s and 80s. Because of that, Estime was seen as a really good player, but honestly was not really getting that much hype if we're being honest. According to NFL Mock Database, he was predicted as a 4th round pick and the 113th overall prospect. While his stock was much higher back in March, he'd end up dipping as the NFL draft came to be. 
Eventually, he would end up getting selected with the 147th overall pick in the fifth round by the Broncos, making him one of those running backs that fell to the middle of the draft. Everyone knows that the 2024 NFL running back class was not great, and none of them really had the complete package, which does include Estime. Despite a well-rounded skill set and a proven track record, analysts were concerned with his long-term speed. He ran a 4.71 at the 40-yard dash, and even despite the poor performances at the 40, he, he performed well in other athletic testing metrics like the vertical and the broad jump, and many are too worried about the 40-yard dash in my eyes. That's why he ended up falling, as Estime checks about every box in terms of size, as he has the perfect build for an NFL back, he comes in at 5'11", and he has both a thick frame, good arm length, and monster hands. Combine that with a great work ethic and insane production at Notre Dame, I don't understand why he fell so much. While he never popped off the page as a wide receiver, he did prove to be a reliable outlet when called upon, catching every single one of his targets while he was at Notre Dame. Will that increase in the NFL? Maybe, but for now, we'll really just have to wait and see. Right now, he'll battle for playing time alongside Javante Williams and Samaj P. Ryan, but unfortunately there has been a little bit of a setback. A couple weeks ago, he sustained a knee injury in practice, and we're just going to have to wait and see if he'll be back in time for the start of the season. I pretty much assume he will, but it looks like it'll be a little bit delayed, and he might not be able to make his impact in the NFL till middle of the year, or maybe even the following season. The first offseason for a rookie is extremely important, and at a position like running back, he really needs to get himself in the rotation, or he can be easily replaced. Still though, I think Estime is going to make it. Just because he's not the fastest running back in the class doesn't really mean much, as there have been plenty of players who've had long NFL careers who weren't the fastest. Estime could end up being the best back from this year's draft class, but a lot will have to go right for him. We'll just have to wait and see, but I would not doubt the guy. But what do you guys think? If you're a Notre Dame or a Broncos fan, what do you think of Audric Estime? Who do you think the best running back from this year's class will be? And what rookie should I cover next? Be sure to let me know down below, leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.